Good, this is Mr. Kerbis and Mr. Song. And we're here for day three, I think, or day four, video for day four, and we're talking about expectation, expected value. Um, and we'll start with a quick definition. The expected payout from a game can be calculated by finding the sum of the product, so product means multiply, of the probabilities and their corresponding payouts. Casinos love this. The expected value is also what could be expected as a long run average if the experiment were repeated a large number of times. So we saw in a previous video when they were talking about flipping a coin and the number of heads that in the long run what you would expect is half the time to get one head, a quarter of the time to get two heads, a quarter of the time to get no heads, but that doesn't always happen with the experiment. So the experiment and the theoretical um, are different. So you need to keep that in mind when you're doing your project and designing your game, but you should know that in the long run, your game should make money when you're designing it. Good. You want to start with uh, example number one? Yes. Or have anything to add about the project? Any tips or tricks for the kids, mm. students? Um, let's have someone else play your game before you turn it in. Mm. That's a good idea. Yeah. Make sure that it works out. Make sure it works out and make sure to have someone else check your expected value and probabilities before you turn the project in. Mm -hmm. All right. Example number one. An ice cream seller estimates that her earnings are $420 on a hot day and $160 on a cool day in summer. If the probabilities of a hot day is 0.35, find her expected, er expected earning on a summer day. Okay. So I'm going to make, make a table. Let's see. Uh, a hot day and a cool day. Mm -hmm. On a hot day, I'm going to make $420. On a cool day, I'm going to make $160. And the probability of uh, having a hot day is 0 0.35. Now, how would I find the probability of a cool day? Mm. We're going to define a, uh, a day as either hot or cool, so these are complementary events. So, probability of a cool day would be 1 minus a hot day, a probability of a hot day. So it'll be 0 0.65. Okay. So that sounds like a Bavarian uh, fall, doesn't it? Or 0 0.65 for a cool day and 0 0.35 for a hot day, so more cool days than hot days. Yeah, so let's find the expected value, uh, expected earning. Um, here's then, uh, looking back up here, the finding the sum of the product of the probabilities and their corresponding payouts. So probability, and that's a corresponding payout. So 0 0.35 times 420 plus... 0 0.65 times 160. And these numbers would definitely be on a calculator section because they're, they're too nasty to, to work out without a calculator. You could, of course, it's not, not so difficult, but um, nevertheless, I would say our expectation would be you'd have a calculator on this problem. It would be... $251 is not bad for a day selling ice cream, eh? Right. $251. Good, so let's go to the next example. And here, it's a lottery. So a lottery has 100 tickets and three prizes. First prize gets 50, second prize 25, third prize 10, but each ticket costs $1. So find the expected loss for a purchaser of one ticket. All the tickets is, is quite simple, but one ticket takes a little bit more work. If we have a look there at um, each, I'm actually going to do it a little bit backwards. You see that we have one ticket, two tickets, or all the tickets. And there are 100 tickets. So I'm actually going to jump up ahead a bit and do part C. If you buy all the tickets, you will win first prize, second prize, and third prize. All right? So it cost you 100, but you will win first prize, second prize, and third prize. So overall, it will cost you $15 to buy them all. So the expected loss is $15. That's not a good strategy, is it? No. Well, if you like winning and you want to ensure that you win, then uh, then I suppose so. But <laughs> this is not financially very bright. 
That means, though, that each of these tickets has an expected loss of 15 cents. Because if you buy all 100 of them, you would lose $15. And therefore, if you buy two of them, each of them loses 15 cents, you would have lost or expect to lose 30 cents, right? Even though the chance is much higher, you would have lost $2. But the expected loss is not the actual loss, right? So if we follow from the formula, this works like, or let's use the formula for part A, then um, you would say, do, 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 do. how would you do this then? Ah, yeah, one out of 100 would win 50, plus one out of 100 would win 25. So the product of the probabilities and its expected value, and one out of 100 would win 10, but overall, each ticket you buy would cost you one. So you would get a loss like that the long way. Okay, so try to, try to look for clues in the problem, but also remember the generalizations which, which you know from the previous uh, example. Anything to add on that one? No. Looks that was a very clever way of solving the problem, I thought. And all right, let's have a look here at number three. We go right back to unit one here with some percentages. We're going to combine this with probability. All right. A woman invests $20,000 in a scheme for one year at an interest of 19%. She, she is warned there is one chance in 1,000 that the borrower would, will default and that she will lose all her money. What is her expect, expected profit from the scheme? Okay. Um, I like making tables, so I'm going to do that. It's a nice way to list the whole sample space. It's a yeah. nice visual help aid, yeah. So, let's see. Since I'm having difficulty defining variables here, um, I'm gonna say she has one in 1,000 chance of making zero dollars. Mm -hmm. And um, at the end of the year, you have 999 out of 1,000 of making 20,000 times one point. So we're using the interest formula from earlier this year, one plus the interest rate times the initial amount. 19% is a really good rate of return. That is. So 999 times out of 1,000, she will earn 23,800. Right. So to find the expected value, I would multiply the probability with this corresponding payout, and one, and one over one thousand times zero will be zero. So I'm just going to multiply these two values: twenty-three thousand eight hundred times nine 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 over one thousand. That would be. Twenty-three thousand. And usually we write money to the nearest cent, so twenty-three thousand seven hundred seventy-six point two zero. I'd take that deal. Yeah, that's a great deal.